I'm Christina Fugis with Mold Making Technology, and I'm here with Lester Jones of Custom Mold and Design. Lester, yes. let's talk about this hybrid additive subtractive machining technology. What is the key to implementing this technology? I think one of the keys is to make sure that we've got the right people involved in implementing that technology. It's a, it's a big leap. Um, we typically are adding some new piece of equipment but doing subtractive machining work. So it's a, just a little bit of a stretch, but it's not that big of a deal for us. This is something that's brand new. Uh, we need to identify the most creative people. People are willing to embrace change, and that isn't always easy for people. Um, but getting the right people involved with the machine and then really learning that process uh, and then going through the repetitions, being willing to try many, many things to get good at it. So what is the number one lesson you've learned so far using this technology? I think when we initially um, took on the machine, we ended up getting a broad group of people involved in it and we found that that was really a mistake. We weren't making the headway because the people weren't having enough concentrated time with it. So when we've dedicated an individual that's involved in it 100% of the time, made that his job, um, that really helped us accelerate our progress. Um, that was a challenge because you t end up taking some of your best people that are really good at certain things and you kind of miss them when you pull them out of that, but it's what we need to do to make the commitment to this process and to that individual to move their career forward. So can you talk a little bit about what is the main benefit of conformal cold inserts made with this hybrid technology to the OEM, to a molder, and to a mold builder? I think it gives us an opportunity as the mold builder, it gives us an opportunity to provide solutions to our customers. We're, we're really looking for the opportunity to build the best quality parts for them. And if we can do something to increase their efficiency and their molding processes, that is a, a really great benefit. And that's really the beauty of conformal cooling is that we're able to build components that there's no way we could manufacture. We've got spiraled water channels that we could not machine any conventional way. So we're able to pr provide that to a customer that needs a complex part. They want to reduce the cycle time. Uh, we've got a, an example that we've uh, run through where we're able to reduce the cooling time by 44 percent. Um, which helps them uh, be able to afford the more expensive tool because they're going to save money, uh, potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars in their production of that product. So I know you have done a demo with Matt Sora. Can you talk a little bit about this insert that is part of the demo? We put together a little bit of a white paper where we worked with a few uh, partners uh, working with Matt Sora. We uh, took replaced the core in an existing mold for a battery case. Um, it's a one inch by four inch by probably four inch tall uh, core. Had baffles in it, pretty traditional kind of a process. We've got ejector pins so the baffles run up in the core. Uh, we are running an 18 second cooling cycle on that particular part. We're able to take that down to a 10 second cooling cycle and the parts actually measure better than they did with the previous situation. So we actually sped it up significantly and made a better part less warp um, because we're able to get that heat out of there in a much better situation. So you've spoken a lot about the machine in the past, about how it's changed and improved because Matsura works closely with you on developing the technology. Yep. So where do you see it going in the next few years? I think as we get more repetitions, as we make more and more different types of parts, we're learning new ways to make it more efficient. Um, working with them, we're going to be able to solve any potential issues as far as uh, maintenance items on the machine, those types of things. So uh, we've got their uh, technical engineering people working with us in our facility quite frequently. Uh, we're doing parts jointly where we're uh, doing some studies and tests about warp that might be involved, those types of things, how to post-process the materials, um, all those kinds of things. It's really a, a great partnership. Uh, so I think spending the time together as we're working to produce those new programs, uh, that's really going to pay some dividends. And I think in the end, people that buy the machine years down the road will end up with a better product because of the relationship with a, a user intimately involved in the development process. Thank you, Lester, for joining me. And for more information on additive manufacturing, custom mold, or Matsora machinery, visit moldmakingtechnology.com.